The Unshackled Waves, Episode 40. Hello and welcome to the Unshackled Waves podcast. I'm Tim Wilms, here for this week's review episode. I'm joined once again this week by my co-editor-in-chief of The Unshackled, Sukuth Fernando. Welcome again. Thanks, Tim, and hello, everyone. Now, this uh, review episode is coming a bit late in the week. That's because of I've been busy with work and Sukuth is busy with uni, so our normal lives kept getting in the way, but we eventually made time. Yeah, I just had uni, so it's getting a bit busy. But yeah, I'm glad we can we can do it today. Yep. So, uh, what's been happening in the news the the past week and a half? Well, uh, in the last uh, of 24, 48 hours, uh, well, no surprise to us, there's been another Islamist terror attack that's happened in the West. Uh, this time, it was London in the United Kingdom, where an Islamist ran his car into pedestrians on the West, Westminster Bridge before crashing into the the palace of Westminster where uh, the British Parliament is and he stabbed a police officer to death before being uh, shot and killed by police. So three people were killed in total with 40 injured. Uh, As usual, we saw the uh, virtue signalling from world leaders expressing their horror, Uh, but of course none of them will do what should be done to prevent uh, more attacks like this happening, which is stopping Islamic immigration. Back here in Australia, again, the issue of same-sex marriage has dominated the political discourse. Well, this started last week when we had a letter from uh, 30 CEOs of major Australian companies uh, pressuring uh, Malcolm Turnbull to break his promise to hold a plebiscite on same-sex marriage and instead legislate through the parliament. Thankfully, Turnbull was having none of it. Uh, Immigration Minister Peter Dutton especially wasn't impressed and told these businesses to focus on running their operations and leave the political debate to ordinary people. Uh, It's also worth uh, noting that uh, Turnbull, he's had uh, a good couple of weeks. Uh, Dare I say that he might be beginning to come back from the political dead. Uh, His response to Australia's looming energy crisis has been good, slamming Labor's renewable energy targets. After a bounce in a news poll earlier this week, Yagli had his strongest day as Prime Minister, announcing finally the Coalition would reform 18C of the Racial Discrimination Act to allow for greater free speech. But we'll start with uh, the most recent news, which is the the London terror attack. Yeah, that was... um quite shocking but then again it wasn't shocking ultimately was it because you know it was expected um you know it's not surprising that we saw an is another islamic terrorist attack in europe um you know we have the meme where it says you know milliseconds um since the last attack um so you know people it's not surprising to see people sort of expecting this sort of thing to happen these days thanks to the leaders yeah, the article that I write is, uh, how many times does this have to keep happening before our leaders actually do something? I'm so sick of you know, them saying this is such a terrible atta- attack on our, our nation and our freedoms, or you know, th- uh, this is such an assault. You know, they, say, uh, they think that by saying you know, how, how, how horrible it is, that that will suddenly pre- somehow prevent further attacks. Yeah, it's the entire virtue signaling tradition we see these days from leaders in Western countries, especially the left-wing leaders, um, and it doesn't really do anything. I mean, it's the exact same process. An attack happens, they withdraw large amounts of information about the attacker's identity, and later on, they you know they they start the hashtags, they start the you know I'll ride with you, you know not all Muslims, and then it it, it all goes it happens again. It's it's a cycle. It's the same thing. It's like a life cycle. You know the attack happens, then the hashtags, then the virtue signaling, and then it, another attack happens somewhere else. So you know it just shows that they're incompetent and that they really don't 
they probably don't even care about our countries because if they did care, they would try and do something. They would try and actually use their power to do something and prevent this, do something practical instead of virtue signaling and telling people, oh, not all Muslims do this, but we aren't seeing anything from them. Uh, so, some of the reaction from the left when there's Islamic terror attacks is like, I worry about the uh, backlash against the Muslim community. What, there's people dead. Like, what about their families, what they're going through? You know, there, there is an actual death toll in this. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it just it just shows like how much they are out of touch with normal people because they are more in, they are more interested in looking at the backlash against a minority, which itself is linked heavily to, to terrorism, a religion that is linked heavily to terrorism and violence. They draw the focus, their attention, and their strength on looking after them instead of looking after their own country and their own people, as well as let's say the migrants who come here and assimilate, you know. So they would rather look at the minorities instead of looking at the actual people who matter. It's, it's interesting to note that uh, are we, we still have to call in the alleged terrorist because of yes. legal, legal reasons. Yes. Uh, yeah. It's interesting to note that he came from uh, Birmingham, which is a, a city in the Midlands of England, and the Muslim population of that town is 21.8%. Uh, which is well above the, the UK average of 4.8%. And over uh, overnight UK time, there was uh, seven arrests uh, made in relation to the terror attacks. So it's another example where Muslims tend to congregate. That's where te uh, terrorism uh, emerges. It is, yeah. And, you know, it just goes to show that the ghettos are sort of where all these things originated from, you know, that's where they all happen. They all, um, you know, form ghettos and live with each other and they plan together, you know, they, they, they come from similar backgrounds and, you know, they do it easily, you know, they, they can plan together, they, they have their equipment, they have what they need, they have their resources because they live together and they actually have connections and, you know, they go on, they do something, something like this and it'll keep happening. Um, and, you know, it's again, as I said, not surprising, is it? Because it's been hap it's the same thing that's been happening all over again in every single Western country in the or Western region in the world. Uh, and no amount of like, intelligence or throwing money at security, beefing up security is, is going to prevent this. I mean, if you've got enough Muslims in the country, and especially if they're in ghettos, where they're pretty much no-go zones for uh, the authorities, like, how are you going to find out if someone's planning an attack. Yeah, exactly. It's hard to, I mean, we can't read minds, you know, so it's hard to actually find out who's going to attack. That's why we need an actual practical solution instead of, you know, um, so, sort of improving the intelligence or improving the, the CCTV or, you know, having, getting better guns or getting better equipment. It doesn't matter because, you know, you, you can't really predict um, 100%, you know, when the next attack is going to be. You can't predict 100% where it's going to be. And, you know, that's why we need a practical solution. And that's why people voted for Trump. You know, all this does, all this does is give Trump and um, Pauline all the new right wing sort of parties the support they need. and. We like that, you know, that is a good thing, I suppose, because those parties actually know what to do. They have the practical solution, you know, ban Islam, ban Muslim migration, ban refugees, and the problem will be much better. Sorry, as in, it will be solved much better. Oh, yeah, well, pa Pauline, uh, uh, she, uh, I thought it was quite quite funny what she did, you know, mocking the, the virtue signaling with her own hashtag, pray for uh, Muslim ban, <laughs> which is, uh, and of course she was pilloried uh, for that, and Malcolm Turnbull said yeah. that, oh, you know, uh, Pauline, uh, by promoting that policy, she's only going to make the terrorists more angry. I mean, uh, there, there's that. <laughs> Uh, ridiculous strategy that if we're just nicer to them, then, uh, you know, they, they, they won't attack us. Yeah, I mean, doesn't that, that's interesting because that just shows that the real, I mean, they blame us for being Islamophobic, but the real Islamophobes are the people, logically, wouldn't it be the people who think Muslims are, can, can be, you know, sort of, they need to be um, sort of, ignorant of the truth, you know, wouldn't that be the actual Islamophobes, the left, who are saying, you know, the Muslims are, you know, violent? That means they know they're violent. Like, ultimately, it just says their argument itself shows that they actually know they're violent because they're saying themselves that, you know, we can't say things that are bad about Islam because it'll encourage them to continue doing all these acts. That just shows 
they actually know the fact that Islam is violent and Muslims are violent. Um, and yes, the media was horrendous as usual, as usual, but it didn't work um, now because most people know what she is. Most people agree with her um, and what, what she says. They see, they, they know that Pauline has a point and they don't listen to the media and what they say. Um, and yeah, there was also the uh, the poll that was made up in in, in a website called Votocrat, and you know it was like it was based on Pauline's comments, and it asked you know would you want to see a Muslim man? And above ninety percent said yes, they would want to, and I suppose that's hopeful. Yeah, I mean that's just a internet poll, but of course we've seen yeah. uh, that survey from last year, which said that forty nine percent of Australians supported a ban on uh, yeah. Muslim immigration, and we we know that it works. I mean. Uh, everyone always points to the example of Japan, like no Muslim immigration, no terrorist problem. I mean, it's pretty simple that, like, the reason why they're occurring in Europe so much is because they've got, they've let Muslims in for uh, decade after decade, and of course it's been turbocharged by the migrant crisis, and countries like France and Belgium, I mean, they're just uh, insane. Yeah, because they've followed the whole, you know, open borders trend we see in politics today. They implemented the open borders. They, you know, put put their own people into this, into such a level of risk, and they're paying for it. The people are paying for the government's incompetence. Um, and yes, Japan is a good example because you, you don't see anything happening in Japan. You know, Japan doesn't allow um, many refugees. I think it was 31, I think, uh, one year they allowed. Um, that was it. So, you know... It just goes to show that a Muslim ban will be effective. Um, it probably won't even be enough, since uh, considering the fact that there are lots of you know Muslims already living in Western countries, and homegrown terrorism is itself a problem. It will be a very good step in that direction. Oh, well, that's the argument the left always put forward. Oh, the, but most of them are, uh, are like local citizens of the nations. But well. That doesn't mean we need to let more in. Yeah. Like it's saying, oh, it's already yeah. bad enough, so yeah, just let them keep coming in. That that's insanity. Yeah, that's similar to the Donald Trump's you know, argument about the Mexican migrants. You know, they, you know, they they, they rape. You know, we already have rape here, so it doesn't matter if we take in more rapists. You know, it doesn't work. It's illogical. You know, just because we already have terrorists, here doesn't mean we should take in more terrorists. Um, we should try and take in less terrorists or t take in no terrorists and focus our attention on actual homegrown terrorism, um, you know, that'll be even more effective instead of, you know, instead of taking even more terrorists inside, instead of taking even more Islamic refugees inside, and then sort of making the problem even, even worse. So, again, that's a good example of how the left, left, it's a good example of how the left's arguments are themselves illogical and don't make sense. Yeah. I am like I'm just so sick of the the virtue signaling that you know this is horrible. Uh, I mean, yeah, like like I said before, we know what what solution is needed, but how many more how many more people have to die in the West for our leaders to finally admit that they got it wrong? Are we are we going to get to a stage where it's pretty much like the streets are so so dangerous that? I, I don't I don't think our current leaders are ever going to get it. They'll just have their heads in yeah. the sand. They definitely need to be uh, replaced with, I mean, America's done that with electing Trump, but it's looking like in Australia and also Europe with the Dutch elections that it's much harder uh, to, to do it over there. But it's sort of, it's... It, it, it makes you depressed that it's going to have to get so much worse for people to, you know, be able to have the courage to go against the elites and the media to vote for people like Wilders, Le Pen or Frog Petrie. Yeah, I mean, their responses themselves sort of make it clear that they really don't care. I mean, you can, you can look at the French president's re response to terrorist attacks. You can look at Angela Merkel's oh, response. Oh, disgusting. Like, how can she yeah. say that with a straight face? Yeah, exactly. You know, it, just, it just says that they really don't care. And it just says that nothing can ever change their position. You know, it just shows that they, you know, they just don't care about what happens in their country. They will always continue to do this exact same thing because... Well, who knows? There are lots of reasons why they would be doing it. Some people say, you know, they, they, they may have some other agenda. Some people say, you know, but, you know, the point is they will continue doing the exact same thing no matter what. And that's why we need to change and go back to what we had before. You know, 
what we had ages ago, you know, strong borders. You know, we had common sense back in the past. You know, we need to we need to bring that back. And that's why we need to vote for people like Pauline Hansen and Marine Le Pen, which who I hope is really going to win. Um, in regards to Wilders, as um, yes, it was quite disappointing, but then I think it's nice to see that Wilders may have had an impact on the on the major center right party because um, they did say they will do something about immigration. Let's hope they keep that promise true. Um, but you know, it seems like Wilders may have had an impact. So there's some good news um, there. But again, we need to see if they'll keep that promise. Um, but yes, we need to see change, and you know, the leaders don't care. That's that's beyond dispute, and the current system doesn't work. That's beyond dispute, and we need to have actual good leaders who care about the country's safety and freedoms and culture and heritage and values. Uh, uh, well, I wonder what their reaction will be next terrorist attack, uh, because because there will be one. I wonder if they'll. Oh. If, if if by the next one they they wake up a bit more, but uh, we'll probably be talking about the next one on a future podcast and uh, leaders' reaction to it. So um, we'll see if you know th if they're red pilled anytime soon. Yeah, we will talk about it again, but you know it'll, it'll continue. It'll continue. It will keep happening. Um, even if Marine wins, it probably will keep happening because, as we know, there will be home contrarism. But at least we can do something about the extra migration intake. So you know, if Marine wins, it'll be a good step in the right direction. But you know, it'll. It, we will see more of this. And why? It's the legacy. It's the legacy of the. EU, the legacy, the legacy of the rulers, the the Angela Merkel, um, Hollande, all of them. It's their legacy, and that's what we will see. That's what we will suffer, and that's what our, you know, maybe that's what the future generations might suffer. Who knows? Um, thanks to them and their legacy. So hopefully that won't be the case. Hopefully they can Marine can, Marine can win and sort of stop it, ASAP. But you know, we can't predict the future exactly. Now let's move on to talking about uh, the ultimate political oxygen sucker, which is same-sex marriage, because uh, it started being in the news early last week uh, with the uh, Cooper's Brewery. They they released uh, the uh, uh, a video. Oh, well, it wasn't released by them. It was released by the Bible Society uh, of Australia, and they were drinking uh, Cooper's uh, Premium Light, and it featured uh, a debate between uh, Tim Wilson. Uh, who's for same-sex marriage and Andrew Hasty, who's against, and it was a very civil and uh, you know go a good uh, video. But of course, uh, because it was hosted by the the Bible Society, and uh, it appeared that you know Coopers supported the Bible Society and weren't a hundred percent in favour of same-sex marriage, then there was this huge backlash, and Coopers released this. Uh, cringeworthy uh, apology video where they pledged to support marriage equality. Um, yeah. And, and so that was that was another example of how uh, th this debate is becoming more and more totalitarian. But later in the week, we also learnt that uh, companies are allowed to have positions on same-sex marriage, but only in favour, because then there was a letter uh, from the CEOs to, to the Prime Minister. Yeah, you know, just... It just goes to show that you know you can't have any of you can have opinions as long as they are aligned with the opinion of the left. That's that's the rule. You know you can have your opinions as much as you want. Just make sure your opinion is aligned with the progressives. Um, but yes, that's the problem these days. Again, it's more of a domestic problem we have, and you know companies again they need to. I think they can have their opinions, but I think they need to focus on their operations more. Um, because you know they're doing a great injustice to society by supporting this. You know that they they're doing it to get. Well, I suppose they are doing it to get more business. They they think society is moving towards this, and therefore you know they want to try and appeal to. That's what they think. They are ignorant to the fact that most people actually don't want it to happen. Um, well, they, you know, but, they have uh, uh, like uh, upper class uh, guilt that, you know, they're, they're really rich, these companies. And so, oh, you know, we've got to seem like, you know, we're caring and compassionate. And that's why they have this you know, yeah. corporate social responsibility and jump yeah. on the social back uh, justice bandwagon. I mean, it's not just this issue. There's uh, companies support the uh, indigenous recognition movement. Yeah, I think uh, 
the fact that, as you said, they have the guilds, the rich guilds, I think it just shows that they probably don't even mean it, um, you know, but they're doing it because, you know, they want to get the money. And as I said, the indigenous, um, those programs as well, you know, they're trying to sort of appear progressive because they've taken the whole concept of co corporate social res responsibility to a whole different, you know, bad level. Um, and so, you know, they're just saying that they're, they're flaunting their ignorance and saying, you know, we support this. Yeah, whatever, we'll just we'll just cave into this. We'll cave into that. And, you know, ultimately probably end up losing because they 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 ignore the fact that most of the country probably don't even support um, terms, terms of marriage, for example. Yeah, and Peter Dutton, as we mentioned, he was the uh, pr probably the most aggressive in slamming the company, saying that you know they should stick to running their businesses and yeah, l uh, leave the political debate to ordinary people. I mean, don't use you know shareholders' money on your and your positions to to advocate for for these issues. Now, people uh, say, have claimed, or those on the left say, how can Peter Dutton say he's in favour of free speech when he said that these companies shouldn't have free speech? Peter Dutton did, uh, is not going to propose a law which forbids companies to speak on social issues. He's just saying, you know, they... Like, he reserves special criticism for, for Qantas and its CEO, Alan Joyce, who, who's, uh, whose bias in this is obvious because he's gay himself. Um, uh, basically, um, because they should, like, Qantas, for example, they should focus on, you know, make, making sure they have the cheapest possible fares, their, their planes run on time and on schedule. Uh, they shouldn't, you know, divert attention to, to these other issues. I mean, uh, the main, uh, when I choose a company uh, to... Uh, to um, spend my money at, like I, I don't want to have to make sure that it aligns with my politics. I just want it to to be the best value and the greatest service. Yeah, and I'm I'm glad you mentioned Qantas and Alan Joyce because Qantas itself right now, instead of focusing on their actual problems, they're focusing on all these social justice issues. You know, Qantas has lots of problems these days. Yes, I understand they hit a profit, but that's only because the oil price went down. That's the only reason. The only reason they hit a profit is because the oil prices are down, and therefore, you know, that that's what oil prices take up. I think it was a third to two thirds of the entire. Um, airline expenditure and so the fact that the oil prices are down means they have much much less expenditure and that's why they hit a profit but Qantas itself has lots of issues these days if it wasn't for the oil prices they would have hit another loss um, and instead of focusing on those problems Alan Joyce has chosen to use shareholders money to use you know all, all their resources to try and further this harmful agenda and Peter Dunn was right he should you know stick to his knitting, as he said, because you know he's he has his own problems, and he, he here he is, sort of being irresponsible, using other people's money responsibly, and then focusing on this instead of the real problems. Yes, they have the right to free speech, and Peter Dutton isn't proposing any law against him. Unlike the left, unlike the left, Peter Dutton isn't proposing an anti-free yeah. speech law. But you know, the point is, the point is that we sometimes need to focus on their actual operations instead of you know virtue signaling about things they don't really even know about. Yeah, and it may be worth saying that if Ellen Joyce is, you know, so desperate to get married, why doesn't he just go back to Ireland? Yeah, 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 exactly. I mean, why doesn't he move back and leave Qantas to someone more competent, maybe, and, you know, go to Ireland and get, get married, you know, after all, you know, he, he doesn't want to have that. So, again, yeah. who knows? <laughs> Uh, like I said, I would prefer that, you know, companies don't get involved in political debates, but obviously they have the freedom to do so. But uh, if, if, they, if they do want to get involved in a uh, political debate, then it, sh it should be like a company should be free to adopt whatever position they want and not have to face this vitriolic backlash from the left. I mean, why, can't it, why, why shouldn't a business be able to stand, stand for traditional marriage if it wants to? Yeah, that's the irony, isn't it? I mean, look at Coopers. Coopers didn't even say anything in the ad. All they had was the actual 
bot the bottles of, of beer, the product in the ad. And, you know, we had this entire backlash, you know, threw the bottles out, they threw their products out. You know, um, it was a, a bar in, in, in Sydney that actually was the first to do that. And they, 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 they did all that. And for some reason, they have the nerve to attack Peter Dutton for apparently infringing their right to free speech. But, but before that, just before that, when Coopers did that, the left were, was the actual, that was the actual um, force that was infringing upon Cooper's right to free speech, infringing upon the Bible Society's right to free speech, because they were full on um, attacking the entire company, attacking, you know, insulting and abusing the product of the entire company, um, because what, they were in, they were used as, a, as the props in a Bible Society's video where it discussed about homosexual or gay marriage. And, you know, that's the irony, isn't it? That's the actual irony. Pete doesn't, didn't even do anything like that. All he said was, your company, you know, just focus on the operations. And by then, you know, the left, when, the, when Coopers does it, when Coopers uses its right to free speech, or when the Bible Society uses their right to free speech, then, you know, that's when you see the actual anti-free speech backlash from the left. Well, well the left think that the, the right to criticise uh, somebody's free speech is suppressing free speech. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's again, it's a bit of a uh, inconsistent logic. Again, we see it on the left. You know, that's their that's their definition. The left is full of inconsistent, you know, illogical arguments that they flip they flip, flip flop from one to another. You know, one minute they they have poor free poor free speech like now, and one minute they're anti free speech like with Coopers. Um, so you know, they're but, the ones who are controlling the actual the left opinion would anyway. Also, also argue that we have the the freedom to boycott a company we do like. Yes, you do. Um, but yeah. uh, but the thing is though, uh, they they are so aggressive in is that they make their um, their actions seem larger than it actually is. I mean, did did anyone like? you know, ordinary Australians, like, really, were they really going to boycott Coopers or, or you know, was it just the, the loudest people who made it seem like everyone was going to boycott Coopers? Yeah, you know, again, that's a bit of a, something we need to look at, you know, was it everyone who was going to do that? Um, you know, was it just the bars who had a, an actual voice on Facebook who were doing that, you know, and let's remember Facebook itself is owned by a progressive person, so who knows what happens there. Um, but, you know, ultimately it's just the irony we see, you know, as I said, Peter Dutton used his right to free speech to criticise other people, other businesses for doing something he didn't agree with, which is fine, but the left, you know, the left uses that and says, you know, that's anti-free speech, while the next minute, when there's a business who supports traditional marriage, oh, they start abusing the entire company. You know, they start, they are the ones who start infringing upon the company's right to, right to free speech. I, I think there's a lesson out of the, the whole Cooper saga for um, conservatives and people on the right is that they need to be more aggressive in the culture war as well. I mean, they yeah. should have been, you know, active on social media, expressing their support for, for Coopers, sending them uh, an email, you know, saying, you know, we, we liked what you did, uh, you know, yeah. maybe you know, uh, bars that... Uh, are run by people the religious faith. Maybe they should do a large order of Coopers, and maybe wouldn't we wouldn't have seen that uh, horrible apology video? Yeah. Um, in fact, what many of us did. I mean, uh, for example, I know that I went on. I forgot the bar's name actually, but I went on the bar's Facebook page, and you know they had a they had a post saying we've boycotted Coopers, we threw them out. You know, you know we we liberated all the all the progressives from this oppression by Coopers, and then you know I was like. So you're telling me that you can't handle their opinions and therefore you choose to actually throw their you know products out just because you want to be degenerate you want to be degenerate and you know just left wing and progressive. And they deleted my comment. And that's what they did. They they keep deleting the comments. Um so you know, even on Facebook it's hard because they can just delete the comments and you know, do whatever they want. Well, let's uh, go back to the issue at hand, which is same-sex marriage. Now, obviously, the plebiscite last year was blocked, and so the the Liberal Party, they still want to, uh, or the coalition, I should say, they still want to keep their promise to hold a plebiscite on the issue. So they've proposed uh, a way around uh, 
uh, their Senate blocking it is that they can have a postal voluntary plebiscite. So you'll get a letter in the mail with a ballot paper, you know, saying, you know, are you in favour of same-sex marriage, yes or no? And you have the option of whether you want to send that back. And I, I think that, um, that, that that's a good second option because I don't, I, I think a plebiscite is needed to resolve this issue because it should be up to the people what the definition uh, of marriage is and yes the the postal option isn't isn't as good as a compulsory uh proper plebiscite yeah um if they if yeah i suppose if you do want to change it then you use a plebiscite um and you know ultimately i support if, if we do need a plebiscite then i, I support this postal option I personally don't prefer a plebiscite for this. I just don't think it should be changed. Um, you know, I don't think we should take any steps to try and change it at all. Meaning, I don't think we should even do a plebiscite to try and try and change it or see what people think. However, if you do want to resolve the issue using a democratic approach, then yes, a plebiscite is good. Um, and ultimately, if that's the approach, then I do support um, a postal plebiscite option um, where people can actually, you know, say what they want. Well, Liberal and National uh, national Parties, the reason why they have the plebiscite policy is because they can't come to a position themselves. I mean, the parties split between those who support same-sex marriage and those who support traditional marriage. And so this is, rather than tear themselves apart over it, uh, which, which would be not good for the country, they just put it to the people and accept that outcome. Yes, I suppose there are other factors, as you said, you know, the party has different factions and um, and it's hard to come to a decision even for them. I just think, you know, it wouldn't have happened if they stayed true to what they were originally and, you know, didn't kick Tony Abbott out, didn't, you know, do all that, um, you know, didn't take the party in a new left wing direction. So, you know, I just think if that didn't happen in the first place, it, it all goes back to the end the entire sort of beginning of the party going towards the left. Um, if that didn't happen, then they probably wouldn't need to have done this anyway. They probably wouldn't have um, had a very sort of um, a conflict within the, within the party when it came to deciding on same-sex marriage um, because they would have had Tony Abbott or someone conservative or actual classical liberal um, who would have had an authoritarian sort of stance saying, nope, the party was founded on these values and therefore we can't support this. Um, but it did, that didn't happen. So we now we ended up here. So yes, from that perspective, since we did end up here, um, I suppose a website can be useful, yeah. I mean, because if if there's not a not a plebiscite and then Labor wins office, they're going to legislate like the worst possible version of same sex marriage, and that's going to be imposed yeah. upon us. Yeah, that's that's true. I suppose from you know, uh, if you look at uh, with a domino theory or something, then yes, if you don't do this, the alternative might be much worse. So because I suppose the, from that perspective, if the plebiscite's voted down, then it makes it very difficult if Labor wins the election to legislate it, given that the people voted against it. Yeah, so, that's true. So, yeah. So I think having the the plebiscite. Uh, will uh, it won't just help resolve the issue in the Liberal and National Party, but it might also uh, get the Labor Party to to rethink um, their current position. Yeah, true. Sure. Yeah, a plebiscite does um, have now. Now that I think about it, you know, the plebiscite does have, seem to have a strategic factor as well. Because as you said, you know, it, it'll help um, resolve the further issues within Parliament when it comes to Labour and Liberals, and you know, might help them clarify themselves more. Um, and given the circumstances, I suppose that is the best option there is. Um, you know, since I can't sort of dwell within what I hope the party would have been, you know, I need to face reality as well. So yes, given the circumstances, the plebiscite does seem to be a good option uh, rather than, you know, having a free vote or a conscience vote. Uh, the, the Labour, um, we, saw, we saw in the news today that um, not only are, are, are they, you know, firmly for same-sex marriage, but they also want to extend, uh, have a 18C version uh, for um, uh, sexual orientation, which would assent, which would basically make any speech against, uh, you know, gay marriage or gay rights as, you know, hate speech, and uh, you, you could be taken before the courts for it. Yeah, and that is 
the classic example of the slippery slope in action. The slippery slope, you know, if you want one, if you want one argument or one situation, if you want any evidence to show that the slippery slope is real, here it is. Labour is now extending the 18C um, aspect of, of the constitution, and they're, they're saying, you know what, we're going to apply it to sexual orientation, we're going to apply it to all this, um, to disability, to all that, and that's a slippery slope. You start with 18C that applies to race and, um, you know, culture and racism, and then it goes down and down and down, and you include more people, and now you can't say anything. You know, you can't criticize gay marriage anymore, you can't criticize, you know, gay adoptions, for example, and well, you can't do anything because it'll be against the law. Right. And that's how the, the cultural Marxists and the left try and actually implement their totalitarian regime over people. It, and it's of, that, yeah. That's in and action. of course you can't dare disagree with uh, the gay lifestyle either. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. You, know, you can't even criticise. If my Mardi Gras article, if, if that was written, oh, yeah. you know... So, so yeah. many, like, if that law passed, so many of our articles would be banned would be banned or my life would be i don't know what would happen would i be going to jail you know what would happen to me you know or the entire all of us you know in the unshackled what would happen to us you know considering what we have said um so you know i i, mean, I did say lots of triggering things in the article so you know that definitely would might mean i, I might go and, j and get jail or something for saying that because you know i actually you know did um actively sort of um violate the 18c if it did include sexual orientation so you know um yeah. it's a big it's a big problem yeah we, we shouldn't be surprised that labor's proposed this because back uh uh when julie gillard was prime minister they pr uh, proposed merging the racial discrimination act with the sex discrimination act yeah. and having a human rights and anti-discrimination act yes. which would apply yes. which would make 18c apply to even political opinion if you are yeah. insulted uh offended or humiliated based based on the uh someone's political belief you could sue them uh, uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned this on a previous podcast, but uh, Labor should really make sure they uh, insert the word uh, "triggered" into 18C to make sure because <laughs> yes. because that is that is a new phenomenon as well, and so people should be able to take action if they're triggered. It is, yeah, and you know, it's a good it's a good umbrella a good umbrella term for you know what what people are experiencing these days. It's a good term to re to refer to what millennials are experiencing these days when they hear something that doesn't you know go um align with their views so you know it's it's very scary and it's very concerning and you know i just hope it won't you know it's that's the best reason if you want one reason to not vote labor that is the reason you know if you vote for if you vote for labor and they win and they do this then you can't say anything you want okay i mean you won't be able to and just saying i don't think they should have a law regarding assault or you know violence when it comes to race or sexuality because I think we already have laws that look after violence and assault. Hey, I mean, hey, we have hey, laws. hey, crime laws, you mean? Yeah, yeah. I just don't think they should have specific laws for race, for example. Because I just think you know we already have laws for that criminalized assault. Yeah. If, you, if you if you anyway, if you murder somebody, like it's pretty clear that you didn't like that. Yeah, person. exactly. <laughs> yeah, uh, if you murder, if you assault, if you you know bash somebody up, if you you know if you if you harm someone physically, then there already are laws to protect people, you know, protect you like that. So, well, there, there are laws to sort of um, convict you and there are laws to protect the victim. You don't need a special a racial law for that sort of assault or, or a sexual orientation law because those acts are already illegal. So why would you want to divide people and sort of categorize people more using the law, using the legal system? Now, we've talked about, obviously, how bad Labour would be, but we do spend a lot of um, energy criticising uh, the coalition and the, the right side of politics. Um, but yeah, things are looking up for uh, Turnbull, as we said in the beginning. Um, obviously, there was the bump in the news poll, I, even though it, it was previously Coalition 45, Labour 55. It's gone back to uh, Coalition 48, Labour 52, which they're still behind, but that's that that's still they're still in a winnable position given that the elections are two years away. And of course, Turnbull has he's announced the extension of the Snowy Hydro scheme to uh, to help solve the the energy crisis. Talking about building a new coal fired power station, and of course, you know, slamming Labour's ridiculous uh, renewable energy target. So he he could be back from the dead. And of course. Uh, he, his announcement of the, the 18C reform on Tuesday, I mean, uh, he, 
he announced with George Brandis that they would get rid of insult, uh, offend or humiliate and put in its place harass, which is way further than even Tony Abbott was, uh, well, Tony Abbott yeah. didn't even bother to put forward legislation. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Um, that is quite surprising, I think, that Tony Abbott didn't do anything. I don't know why. I don't know why he wouldn't do anything. I would expect someone like Tony Abbott to do something, you know, regarding he said lots of things. You know, he was the one who explicitly said in Parliament what the Muslims were about to do uh, using terrorist attacks. He was the one who explicitly said that, you know, their goal was to, quote, you know, uh, stab people in their kidneys. But that's what ISIS said. That's what, you know, those Islamic terrorists said. He, you know, he... What he said, many of the things he, he said would actually violate any agency um, clause or any any agency um, law. If it did include if, if it included gender, then you know his comments regarding the housewives of Australia with the ironing that could have you know violated that law if it included gender. But you know it's surprising the fact that he would say things that are controversial, but then wouldn't really do something about. Um, the actual law, but it's nice to see Malcolm Turnbull doing something. Um, who knows? Maybe he is um, not a cock inside. Maybe he's just you know being controlled I, I, by I, someone. I, I still believe that he is you know a man firmly of the of the left. But the thing is, like, if he if he does the right things by conservatives, then that's a good thing. I mean, yes, like his personal views are are horrible, but if he does the yeah. right thing by us, like, and. I know a lot of people have commented, oh, he's only doing this to save his job, but yeah, but so, so what? If, he, if he's doing the yeah. right thing to sh save his job, then that's a good thing. Yeah, that's the incentive. I mean, I suppose if the incentive is to, you know, do this to make sure that he's going to be, he's going to keep being prime minister, then do it, you know, but that's, it doesn't matter what his intentions are right now, you know, what matters is we get rid of the actual language in the clause you know, in, in 18C, and he's doing that. And I'm happy, you know, yes, he's still a, a left wing, I suppose he would be left leaning. Um, but, you know, again, it's a nice thing that he's doing all this to appeal to conservatives because and remember the trend, you know, people, we have seen, you know, a conservative right wing sort of revival in, in every Western country, you know, we, Trump, you know, Donald Trump in Europe, we are seeing, you know, the revival um, of conservative right wing values in Australia. Same thing. Pauline Hanson is doing quite well. You know, she's doing well in the polls. She's having support. So I think that may have influenced him as well. You know, he may have realized that, oh, oh, look, hold on. You know, we have we are seeing all these right wing values coming up, you know, being revived. So maybe it's time to adapt and, you know, appeal to them. And good. I mean, I suppose, you know, in the inside, he might still be a cock. But, you know, I suppose it's a, it's a good thing that he's trying to appeal to common sense, people who follow common sense. Yeah, and I, I still think that if Turnbull's, you know, going to do the, the right thing by conservatives, he deserves to stay. Uh, I don't think that Tony Abbott should return uh, because, yeah, like we talked about before, he had his chance as Prime Minister to yeah. be a Conservative Prime Minister. He failed. Um, it's easy for him to say all these conservative things from the back bench, but it's another thing to actually do them when you're Prime Minister. I mean, Malcolm Turnbull has proposed changes to 18C while Prime Minister. I mean, that is you know, a much bigger achievement than just shouting from the back bench. Yeah, Tony Abbott's behavior in the back bench hasn't been very good, and it sort of has um, disillusioned people from well, supporting well, him. Well, he's even turn, turned off his, uh, even his closest supporters like Matthias Corman and Peter Dutton. I mean, they're, they're now pretty much like conservative confidants for Turnbull. Yeah, yeah, and, you know, ultimately that's what we want. We want someone conservative to replace Turnbull if he's replaced or we want Turnbull to listen to the conservatives um you know whatever as long as it gets the job done yeah. um and it's a nice it's a good it's a nice change yeah I mean Turnbull to his credit he stuck to the line on same-sex marriage and also um strong borders as well I mean he's saying you know we're not going to let all these people from you know Nauru and Manus Island into into Australia so on the the key coalition commitments or uh promises he's definitely held the line that's commendable. Yeah, he has actually stayed true to what he said. Um, you know, he said he will do this, and yeah, and he's 
staying true to that. You know, he's saying the strong borders. He's always saying, you know what, just, I don't care what you think. Strong borders is important. You know, I don't care what Labour is saying. Strong borders is important because we know what happens. First, we really don't want people dying at sea. Second, we don't want, you know, people coming here and you know, doing more Sydney sieges. And, you know, thirdly, we don't, we don't want to spend our money on it. We have other things to spend our money on instead of refugees. So, you know, he's been true to that. He's been true to the plebiscite promise. You know, he's he is a supporter. He says he's a supporter of same-sex marriage. Um, but, you know, despite that, he said, you know, our, our, our promise was the plebiscite and we will do that. And that's what he did. And now with the post to the plebiscite, he's trying to uh, make sure he will keep his promise somehow. Um, and that's commendable, yes. I definitely think that if Turnbull uh, is to to fall down, and like uh, obviously his track record is is not that good, even even though he's he's beginning to uh, step step up now. But if uh, Turnbull was to fall, I'd rather the, them go to uh, liberals, go to a proper conservative like Peter Dutton, who has got a solid record. I mean, as immigration minister, he's you know being being fantastic. Um, he also defended um, Trump's um, immigration executive order and obviously we talked about his um, uh, his comments on the the, uh, the co uh, company CEOs pressuring the government for same-sex marriage uh, so, uh, and also uh, going back to last year he talked about mistakes in previous Australian immigration policy and how we shouldn't uh, sh shouldn't make the same mistakes so I definitely think that you know Dutton his his performance in a senior role definitely makes him more qualified than somebody like Abbott from the backbench. Yeah, Dutton has been very consistent as well. He has the honour and the integrity, and that's very important. You know, as he said the, with the Lebanese, his um his um his comment on the Lebanese migrants. You know, saying we took too many Le Lebanese migrants, um, and that's a problem because well, yesterday that is a problem. Um, you know. Uh, I personally have seen what the Lebanese migrants are capable of. Um, so, you know, he has been consistent, he has been honourable, and he's done things well. And I think he would be very good for a party like Australian Conservatives to work with Cory Bernardi, for example, um, rather than, you know, be with the Liberals. Um, or he can, you know, he might actually save the Liberals from peril and make sure they win again. Um, who knows? But I, I suppose, yes, Peter Dutton is a good example of a good leader. I, I think he has made uh, mistakes, which I have written about. I mean, he said that the uh, uh, Muslim girl hijab Australia Day billboard was great, which I don't know why he had to yes. say that. And he yes. also, as immigration minister, revoked the visa, uh, visa of uh, American pro-life activist um, uh, Troy, uh, Troy Newman. So that was quite disappointing from from somebody who is, from what I hear, pro-life himself. Uh, yeah. But, yeah. But of course, this is the Liberal Party that we're talking about. None of them are perfect. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he's the he's the lesser of two evils. Like, he's the best out of all of, all of them. You know, we're not saying he's perfect, but Le yes, he is the best out of all of them. How many Liberal MPs are there? Lesser, yes. le lesser evil of about 90 of them. Yeah, nine of them. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, that's better. That's better than you know the others. So you know, let's hope he does have a good impact on the party. I have uh, the criticism, like because uh, I've spoken with like Liberal Party supporters who say, "Oh, Dutton wouldn't be good because, oh, uh, you know, he's not charismatic, and the media would tear him apart." But so what if the mainstream media tore yeah. him apart? That's a good thing. Yeah. I mean, exactly. who cares what they think? I mean, you want a conservative leader who's going to trigger the mainstream media and. Um, uh, and in terms of like not being charismatic, I mean, people forget that you know John Howard was pretty plainly spoken. I mean, he wasn't a you know a great orator, but he won four elections because he he stuck to uh, his policies. Uh, he he reflected the values of the Australian people, and that's why he kept uh, get kept getting reelected uh, because the the people felt that people knew deep down that he was who reflected who they were. Yeah, and also the fact that it's it's funny how the mainstream media says he's not he's not charismatic because the fact that he triggered the mainstream media shows that he is charismatic because that's charisma. Charisma doesn't have to be positive; yeah. it can be both positive and you know sort of um, controversial as well. That can make you charismatic as well. Um, so it, it's funny how they said that because you know they he triggered the he triggered the mainstream media and that just shows he is charismatic. Um, so you know again mainstream media irony. There you go. Yeah, uh, if you if you've seen him uh, being interviewed on the ABC or Sky News, he's definitely not afraid to be triggering. Yeah. That's fantastic. 
yeah, exactly. And that is what we need, you know, someone who says the truth, someone who says like it is, instead of, you know, caving into the political correctness. Yeah, I mean, Tony Abbott, like, that, one of the reasons he failed is because he tried to get the mainstream media to like him by campaigning on yeah. issues such as Indigenous uh, recognition uh, and, you know, saying he was a feminist. Yeah, that was a bit of a back backlash. Um, I suppose that's, yeah, I suppose... You know, from from that perspective, then it's not kind of it's not surprising that Tony Abbott's gone. For, you know, if he did if he did that, you know, I suppose he he lacked honor in a way, and Dutton has much more honor than Tony Abbott. So you know, Dutton better. Yes, Dutton is better than Tony Abbott. But let's just end this by saying we shouldn't get too optimistic about the, the Turnbull government. They could easily yeah. fall apart next week. So we're, we're just saying yeah. that they, they've had a good month. Um, if they keep going like this, then there could be some light at the end of the tunnel. But, of course, um, yeah, we, we don't have much faith. We should pr- say that we don't have much faith in mainstream politicians. Yeah, we're not psychics, so we don't know what, what's going to happen. If he does keep on this path, then it's a good sign. Mm. Well, that's all we've got time for on uh, today's review show. I'm glad we finally got to record it. Yes. <laughs> uh, so thank you for joining me, Sukuth. That's okay. It's been my pleasure. And, of course, the usual reminders at the end of the show apply. Uh, don't forget, if you haven't, to sign up to our email list at theunshackled.net slash subscribe. Also, please consider supporting the website. You can either become a patron on Patreon or donate via PayPal. And, of course, don't forget to subscribe to this podcast on SoundCloud or iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, or view the video version on YouTube. And, of course, don't forget to keep checking theunshackled.net on a regular basis for all the latest news. Thanks once again for listening, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.